Hello students, I welcome you all to this session on refraction of light. We have completed ray diagrams, mirror formula, etc. related to spherical mirrors. Now in this video, we'll study about refraction. We'll study about refraction through a glass slab. We will do activity 10.8, 10.9, 10.10 and we'll just get a feel of what refractive index is. So we start, there's a question. A ray of light traveling in air enters obliquely into water. Does the light ray bend towards the normal, away from the normal or goes undeviated? You will be able to answer this once we have gone through the slides which will follow. So we start with activity 10.8. We say that take a shallow bowl on a table and put a coin in it. Now move away from the bowl. Stop when the coin just disappears. Then ask one of your friends to pour water into it gently without disturbing the coin. You keep on looking from that position from where you had stopped seeing the coin and the coin becomes visible all over again. Let's have a look at the video to understand this activity better. Just take a coin, put it in a bowl, move away from the coin till you can not see the coin anymore because the light will not bend around the corner of the bowl and hence you cannot see the coin. Start adding water to the bowl, fill it to the top. Keep seeing it from the same position and magically you can see the coin again. Let's see this by having two bowls. We keep moving away from the coin. We add the water in one of the bowl and we can see it. Where is the other bowl? We cannot see the coin. Now let's look at the science behind it. When the light enters water through air, it reflects or bends and that makes the whole coin look like it's moved up. In this case, we are shining a laser and you can see, you can point the laser on the coin. Keep the laser at the same angle in the other bowl and you cannot point it because the light doesn't refract or the laser doesn't refract in this case. Here you can see the coin appears to be up but the true position of the coin is down. So all of you can see that uh, when we poured water in the bowl, the coin which was otherwise not seen to us all of a sudden was seen. How did this happen? Okay, When the coin is at the bottom of the bowl, and the light rays which are reflected by it come and strike the edge of the bowl. Hence they don't reach our eye. But when we pour water into it, then what happens? Then the same rays, now they start bending. Okay, When they come to the interface, the boundary of the two mediums, these bend. If I draw a normal over here, then this ray now bends away from the normal okay and it goes in this direction right similarly i can get more rays i take one more ray it bends and it and it goes in the direction of the eye okay so when i retrace these rays backwards they seem to be coming from this point got it so I get a virtual image of the coin and it is this position is much higher. The coin appears to be raised and I can see, got it? So this activity shows to us how refraction of light takes place when light enters from one medium to the other medium. We have some, some more activities lined up. Let's go there. Now all of you must have seen that when we insert a pencil, when we immerse a pencil partially in water, which means half the pencil is in one medium, that is air, and the half the pencil is in water, then what happens? The pencil appears displaced. Okay, the pencil appears bent. Got it? So how does this happen? This again happens because of refraction of light. Let's go to the next slide to understand it better. Here you can see that the pencil is immersed in liquid and when a ray starts from the tip of the pencil, it comes to the interface. 
once it comes to the interface because it is going from a optically denser medium to the rarer medium so the speed increases it bends away from the normal so it goes like that similarly one more ray coming okay one more ray coming when it comes to the interface it goes away from the normal so when we retrace these rays back then they appear to be coming from this point which gives me a virtual image of the part which is immersed in the water got it so my a pencil appears to be to be bent at the interface okay now the extent of displacement changes with the change in the liquid if i put in kerosene it appears more bent if i put in turpentine again it appears even greater bent okay so why does this happen that we'll understand in the coming slides let's go to the next slide now that we have seen these activity first let us define refraction a refraction when light travels obliquely obliquely means at an angle as you saw if this was the interface then the light was coming at an angle okay it was coming at an angle to the boundary of the two mediums so when light travels obliquely from one medium to another the direction of propagation of light in the second medium changes had it gone straight light travels in a straight line we all know it should have gone like this okay but its direction in the second medium changes we saw that it came towards the normal like this got it so when light travels obliquely from one medium to another the direction of propagation of light in the second medium changes and this phenomena is known as refraction of light i'm sure all of you have understood the definition of refraction and now it is time for me to take you to the next slide okay now the next question that arises we have already understood that it bends the next question that arises is why does it bend okay so we go to the next slide to get the answer see when light goes from a optically rarer medium to a optically denser medium its speed decreases and hence it deviates okay now this is the boundary substance 1 is optically rarer this is optically rarer and the medium 2 that is this one water over here is optically denser so when light comes obliquely so when light comes obliquely at an angle its speed changes instead of going at the same speed in a straight line the speed falls as this medium is optically denser and hence it bends towards the normal okay it deviates let's take the analogy of a car okay i have a car which is coming in this direction i make the four wheels of the car okay the four wheels i'm not good at this okay i make the four wheels and now the car comes in this direction we say that this is a road okay this is a perfectly made road okay which means the car can go at a good speed but this one this one is a sandy this is this place is full of sand we don't have any road over here okay so now when the car comes here okay when the car is here this wheel has gone into the sand but the other four or uh, three wheels are still on the road okay so now what happens this wheel goes slow and these two wheels these three wheels are still going fast so what happens that the car turns like this isn't it till the other wheel also comes in the sand it turns like this because this wheel was stuck and the other kept on rotating so once this wheel is in air now the car continues to go in its straight path okay similarly when light strikes the interface okay let me undo all this so similarly now we can take light to be coming okay light to be coming towards the interface 
when it strikes the interface now a part of the wave has already gone in okay so this becomes slow and outside half the wave is still going at the same speed here this is slow and it is still going at the same speed now when the entire thing is in now it goes okay in the straight path at a slower pace so that's the reason it bent over here i hope hope all of you have understood i'll take you to the next slide so when light travels from a optically denser to a optically rarer medium which of the following is true you have to answer okay a angle incidence is equal to angle of reflection b angle of incidence is less than angle of reflection or c angle of incidence is greater than angle of reflection you think and by the time you think i'll just make up my diagram okay now this is the boundary i have uh, when light travels from optically denser okay so we take this side optically rarer and on the off top side i take the optically denser okay i take this to be a glass slab and this is air so now light travels from a optically denser medium to a optically rarer medium wherever it strikes i draw the normal over here okay and the angle which the incident ray makes with the normal is the angle of incidence this is i okay now it is going from a denser medium to a rarer medium ideally it should have gone straight like this okay but since it is going to a rarer medium so it bends away from the normal okay it goes away like this so you can see that this is the angle of refraction okay so clearly in the diagram you can see that this angle is greater than the angle of incidence these are vertically opposite angles and you can see that light would have gone ideally like this and so i can see that my angle r is greater than angle i got it which means answer correct answer is b that my angle of incidence is less than angle of r i hope everybody has understood and i take you now to the next slide okay now this is activity 10.3 point article 10.3.1 refraction through a rectangular glass slab in this what do we do is we take a drawing sheet we put it on a drawing board and then we pin it up we pin it up at the four corners which means we put thumbnails one over there over here one over here and one over here once i have done this i place a rectangular glass slab on the sheet and i draw the outline on the paper okay i'll get a rectangle like this i take it around its edges on the paper and i get a rectangle I'm, i can't do it that side because the edge is not allowing me to go to that the paper so assume that i have the rectangular base drawn on the paper then what i do is i remove this a uh, rectangular slab and i draw a perpendicular the normal to one of the faces and i draw a incident ray at some angle okay then i place two pins on this line the incident ray which i have made and then i place my glass slab black, back on the boundary which i had drawn very carefully and then i go on the other side with my eye positioned over there now i take two more pins okay these pins we had named e and f a capital e and a capital f okay this was e and this was f so now i go on that side and align my pins looking through the displaced images of these pins such that all four pins okay now i put two pins i say g and h okay such that to me they appear to be in a straight line everybody understood then i remove the glass slab and i join the this point and bring it close to the edge we go to the next sheet to see what do we get what kind of a figure okay this is the figure we get 
Now, E and F were the two pins that we put in initially. And G and H were the two pins that we aligned with the displaced images of E and F. So now we have got these two. Let me pick up my pen. Now I have got these two rays. I have this. Okay. I have the normal in place which I had drawn. I have the boundary in place which I had drawn. Okay. And I have the emergent ray which I joined the two points which were made by G and H. Okay. So once I have removed the glass slab, what I do, I join O to O dash. Okay, O is the point of incidence on surface 1, that is AB. And O dash is the point of incidence on surface 2, that is CD. Got it? Next, what I do is, I align my scale with the incident ray and I extend it. Okay, I extend it. And I see that my emergent ray is parallel. My emergent ray is parallel to the incident ray. Got it? In your examinations, CBSE examinations, now they ask you to mark angle of incidence. So the angle of incidence is this one. Let me undo everything and I, then I do it nicely so that you can understand. Okay. So now this angle, the angle made by the incident ray with the normal at surface 1 is the angle of incidence. And the ray goes from an optically denser medium to a, a rarer medium to a denser medium. So it bends towards the normal. So this smaller angle is the angle of refraction, okay, which I have represented by R1. And then it strikes over here, okay, and this is the angle of incidence on surface 2. And the ray that comes out, the angle which it makes with the normal is known as the angle of emergence. Got it? We represent it by a E. Now, angle of incidence and angle of emergence, since these two rays are parallel to each other, will be the same and this displacement between the incident ray and the emergent ray is known as lateral displacement. You get questions wherein they ask you to draw the diagram or complete the diagram and mark lateral displacement. Okay, So the light because of refraction has deviated from its path and the distance between the incident ray and the refracted ray is known as lateral displacement. Okay, so now in this video, this is the last thing we'll be talking about and this is laws of refraction of light. There are two laws. The first law says that the incident ray, the refracted ray and the normal to the interface of two transparent medium at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane. Okay, the incident ray, the normal and the refracted ray all are lying on this plane. So that's the first law. It's very similar to the first law of reflection. The second one, this we need to understand. The second one is also known as Snell's law. Okay, Snell gave it to us. So it's also known as Snell's law. Now what does it say? This law says that the sine of angle of incidence, which means sine i, Okay, what is sine? You'll be studying trigonometry in class 10. It is the ratio in a right angle triangle. If I draw a perpendicular over here, okay, to the normal, then uh, the sine of this angle is the ratio of perpendicular to hypotenuse. This is the perpendicular and this is the hypotenuse. Okay, so the ratio of P by H is known as the sine of angle. Okay, so sine of angle I upon sine of angle R, okay, again I do the same thing, okay, I, uh, we have got tables wherein we can check the value of sine for different degrees, so now this is R, which means sine of this angle, which means this P and H, this is always a constant, it is always a constant, we represent it by a mu or a nu, and this mu or nu is known as the refractive index of medium 2 with reference to medium 1. We write it like mu 2 1. If this is 2 and this is medium 1. Okay. So the sine of angle I to sine of angle R. Which means the sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction. For a pair of mediums. Like in this case we have air and glass. 
for a pair of mediums is always a constant and this is known as refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1. Okay. Okay. Now, one thing we when we started, we said that light will bend when it is incident obliquely. So the last question uh, which we are doing in this part is if it falls normally, okay, if it falls normally, I have the normal also over here and I have the incident ray also over here. So what is the angle they are making? Many children say 90 degree. No, I'm not asking about the angle it makes with the surface. Okay, I'm asking about the angle of incidence it is making. The angle of incidence is with the normal. So the normal is also there and the incident ray also is on top of that which means the angle they are making is 0 degree, okay. So angle of incidence is equal to 0 degree. So what will happen in this case? Will the ray bend? No, it passes undeviated. It goes straight like this. It does not show refraction. So the question arises, why does it not show? Okay, so we'll prove that mathematically. We just understood that as per Snell's law, the sign of angle of incident we just studied in the previous slide that as per Snell's law, the sign of angle of incidence upon sign of angle of refraction is a constant, okay, which is known as the refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1. So if in this case, my I is theta, okay, the angle of incidence is theta, which means sine 0. And we know that sine 0, the value is 0, okay, hence 0 upon sine r should be equal to the constant, okay, which means if I cross multiply, which means the constant into sine r should be equal to 0, okay. Now this constant can't be 0, which means this should be 0. So if sine r is 0, it means that r also is 0. So we have proved it that when the angle of incidence is 0, the angle of refraction also is 0, which means the light passes undeviated. Okay, that's all we have in this video. Thank you very much for watching. And we will surely come back with the next video we will, where we will talk about refractive index in detail and do some numericals also related to refractive index. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Please continue watching.